Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Pranav. This is Project Mashiro. We are building real FMCW radar hardware and software from the ground up to explore the application of synthetic aperture radar imaging techniques on physical systems. We avoid using any off-the-shelf complete solutions like Arduinos or Arduino modules. Instead, we use our own hardware and circuits that we design ourselves. Generally speaking, radars have less spatial resolution compared to optical imaging platforms. This is due to the longer wavelength of RF signals at about 5 centimeters for our system compared to about 400 to 700 nanometers with optical imaging. Synthetic aperture radar imaging is a technique that provides better resolution by effectively synthesizing a virtual aperture using a radar platform in motion. This enables the resolution of radio frequency imaging to approach optical imaging quality. Mashiro FS is our front end that transmits and receives microwave signals for the actual radar sensing. There are only a handful of components to this design as it serves as the first step into RF hardware development. Here is a brief overview of how our radar works. FMCW, or Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave, is an elaborate name for a pretty intuitive concept. Basically, the radar system emits a signal that is changing in frequency over time. It then listens and compares the frequency of the received signal to the frequency of the currently transmitted signal. The difference in frequency corresponds to the time it takes for the signal to travel to the target and back, which corresponds to the distance of the return. Our hardware consists of a voltage-controlled oscillator which generates our RF signal, with its frequency governed by an external signal that is amplified by a high-power RF amplifier, the power amplifier, before being transmitted through an antenna. A portion of the signal is tapped off through a coupler to act as a local oscillator input for the mixer. The tuning signal here can come from a microcontroller like our Coda and Renka dive boards, or in the future, a phase lock loop for stability. For most of our current testing, we are using the function generator on our scope to try out various parameters. The return signal is much weaker than the transmitted signal. It's amplified by a low noise amplifier or gain block before going into the mixer. The mixer is a nonlinear device that compares the frequency of the return with the frequency of the currently transmitted signal. It outputs the intermediate frequency, which is basically the frequency difference between LO and RF. This is the baseband that we're interested in. I developed Renka and Coda, minimal development platforms for STM32F7 and STM8S. We are using Renka to enable real-time data acquisition. Our current setup involves taking the parallel digital output from the ADC and sending it to the computer via USB OTG HS. Synthetic aperture technology assumes that your radar is moving in a theoretically perfect path, so if there are deviations, you get motion errors. There are several ways to compensate for this. We are taking a hardware approach to this problem by putting an inertial sensor onto our radar board, offering us concrete data opposed to addressing the problem in software. To visualize range information from the baseband, we use a fast Fourier transform, extracting the frequency data so we can see which frequencies make up the signal. Here, in a simple demo, we use an FFT in MATLAB to visualize range information. The FFT outputs data in quadrature signals. Quadrature, meaning 90 degrees apart in phase, utilizes Euler's formula to represent the information with an in-phase component representing amplitude and a quadrature phase component representing the phase in imaginary numbers. This lets you represent both your amplitude and phase in the same point. Synthetic aperture radar operates with this fundamental principle, but various techniques and adaptations can make it more complex, adding in interpolation, compression, filtering, and more. We're building everything from the ground up to reduce costs and allow greater flexibility and control for prototyping. Aside from designing our circuit boards, we also like to make lots of components and hardware, like our coupler, spectrum analyzer probe, corner reflector, and antennas. We're applying skills and expertise we acquired from working on various projects in the past to further our understanding of even more advanced concepts. We were inspired by work from Henrik and the MIT Build a Radar IAP course, which showed us the possibility of making our own RF remote sensing system. We started Project Mashiro around late July 2020 where we began exploring various approaches to realizing our homebrew radar platform. Through one of our teachers, we got in contact with engineers at Tektronix Incorporated. We had the opportunity to meet with them over video meetings. As their headquarters are located very close to us, we were able to visit their lab to diagnose our designs in person. Tech also lent us equipment that we could only dream of. This MDO4104C allowed us to visualize the very high frequency signals that we are dealing with. 
We were introduced to sensors like the Inertial Motion Measurement Unit from our previous ventures into UAV design. Our interest in radio frequency systems came from past prototyping with building FM transmitters and playing with walkie-talkies when we were young. We contacted several companies to store student samples for our projects. People like Rebecca Chen from JLCPCB and Gora Vahora from Analog Devices helped us greatly by offsetting costs. In January, we were selected among five other projects for the MIT Think program, which provided us with funding and the opportunity to work with MIT faculty. A few meetings with them helped us understand some concepts and gain advice on our next steps. Currently, as of mid-February 2021, we have demonstrated Mashiro FS functioning in FMCW mode as well as CW mode. We are pretty satisfied with the performance of our current system. We have made considerable progress since project conception a few months ago. As I mentioned, Mashiro FS serves as the first step into radar engineering. There are numerous issues with the design of the board that we plan to address with an upcoming revision. Some of the improvements that we'll implement include the addition of a frequency synthesis PLL device to achieve better frequency sweep linearity, redesign gain stage to the receive section, potentially including variable gain capability for flexibility, addition of a range compensation low reject filter and an anti-aliasing filter on the baseband output for signal conditioning and better dynamic range. We also plan to use CAE software to simulate various parts of our system like microstrip elements and antennas to find ways to improve standing wave voltage ratio. We are exploring constructing horn radiators from PCB sections, as well as the viability of tapered slot aerial designs. Due to the self-built nature of our project and our limited access to engineering equipment, we don't really have exact specifications regarding our designs. Things like noise floor and gain budget are estimates and best guesses. Processing baseband to extract range information is currently done on a computer. We plan to look into using FPGAs to perform signal computation. We bought some control boards from decommissioned obsolete crypto miners with Xilinx Zinc chips to try out HDL programming. After discussing with Aimer from Tech, we would potentially like to use Lattice FPGA chips instead, due to their power source flexibility and open source toolchain. The Lattice FPGAs are battery driven or USB, so it's perfect for the application. We've learned everything by ourselves using resources on the internet and direction from mentors, so there may be gaps in our understanding. We do apologize in advance in case of any misconceptions or misrepresentations. All of our designs and documentation are available on GitHub or our website. We hope that our work may benefit someone, as we have taken inspiration from many before. Lastly, we would like to note that we are fully compliant with government and organizational guidelines regarding COVID-19. We are following the recommended practices to minimize exposure risks this is Project Mashiro. Thank you.